You're watching Don Shea Box of Nation. <laughs> We need, a, we do need a big fight, yeah. right? You haven't really had a big fight. You boxed Luke Campbell, it was a great win. Great win, right? Thank you. But I just feel that you and Devin is a super fight. It sells out the Staples Center, you make a fortune. But as I've said in every interview, if you get Tank or you get Pacquiao, there it is. I can't argue. If you don't, I think you should consider Devin Haney, personally, because I think he's a massive fight for massive money. And if you believe you can win, oh, I know. Yeah, but then you should take the fight. If you don't get those other fights. But okay, I, I respect okay. you but for chasing. But if I do get it. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Man, I'm telling you right now, the walls are really starting to close in on Ryan Garcia. Usually I'm talking about the walls closing in on Canelo. But now the walls are finally starting to close in on Ryan Garcia. He is under a lot of pressure to take the Devin Haney fight. And I got to really commend Eddie Hearn for doing his actual job as a promoter. Eddie Hearn is putting as much pressure on Ryan Garcia as we do over here when it comes to new media. So Eddie, he did an interview on the DAZN app with Ak and Barack. And in that interview, he flat out said, Ryan Garcia is refusing to fight Devin Haney. And then Eddie says something that really blew my mind. He said, even though the media doesn't want to mention it, it's clear that Ryan Garcia is refusing to fight Devin Haney. The fact that he acknowledged that old media is pretty much refusing to talk about it, it lets you know he knows what time it is. I mean, I was really proud of Eddie Hearn because these are the type of factual talking points that you would usually only hear from me or Ike. Speaking of the media not mentioning these points, not wanting to talk about the fact that Ryan Garcia is refusing to fight the guy that he became a mandatory to fight, the champion that he became the mandatory to fight, Ak and Barack, surprisingly, which I believe was Ak, he was actually trying to defend Ryan Garcia by using Ryan Garcia's excuses for why he didn't take the Devin Haney fight when he was Devin Haney's mandatory. He said, well, Ryan Garcia, he said he didn't take the fight because he wants to fight in a full arena. But first of all, before I even get into Eddie Hearn's response, if you were going to quote what Ryan Garcia said, which I'm talking about this Ock guy, if you were gonna quote what Ryan said in the past, why didn't you also quote him when Ryan Garcia admitted that he felt that Devin Haney would be his most difficult fight out of the Final Four or the Fab Four. I mean, you can't just quote one thing he says because it comes off as bias. You should have quoted everything that Ryan Garcia said. Once again, Ryan has said on multiple interviews, he felt that Devin Haney was going to be his most difficult challenge at 135, right? Now, going back to Eddie Hearn, Eddie responded to that question completely shutting down that excuse because he said that's a cop-out because Canelo Alvarez is already fighting with about 60,000 fans for the Sanders fight coming up in May. And then he mentioned another fight that had 15,000 fans in attendance. So then Barack, he comes back and tries to defend Ryan again. And he says, oh, but, but you know, but Ryan was talking about fighting in California. Once again, Eddie, he shot that down. He said, it's a cop-out because I can tell you for sure by July, even California will have fans. So there is no excuse. There is no excuse. And I meant to bring up the point that Ock, when he was telling Eddie Hearn that, oh, well, you know, um, Ryan says that, you know, he wants a full crowd. He wants a full arena. And he said, and I agree with Ryan Garcia. That's what he said. But like I told you, Eddie Hearn completely shut down all of those excuses and continued to call everything that Ryan Garcia was saying a cop out. You know, being an impartial, very, very good reporter is about asking the real tough questions and exposing contradictions when you're interviewing someone. My point is when Ryan Garcia used that excuse Oh, you know, I want to fight in a full arena. That's why I didn't take the Devin Haney fight. If that's the case, how come Ryan Garcia didn't use this excuse when it came to the Tank Davis fight, when it came to the Manny Pacquiao fight? Those are actually bigger fights than the Devin Haney fight. 
So you would really expect him to use that excuse for those fights. Like, no, no, you know, I'm fighting against Manny Pacquiao. I want it to be a complete full arena, right? Matter of fact, there was a poll on the internet where they asked fans, what fight do you want to see the most? This poll had over 100,000 votes. And you know they picked Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia? They picked that fight over Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, over Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. They picked this fight over all of those fights. So once again, why wouldn't Ryan Garcia say the Tank Davis fight is too big to fight him now? I want to wait until there's a full arena. He didn't say that. But he says this only when it comes to Devin Haney. If the story does not add up, it's because it's not true. You know, I will never understand, regardless of who you're rooting for, how can you as a reporter, for you to be in this position to actually push for these fights that boxing fans want to see, how can you sit back and say, well, yeah, I mean, I could kind of understand why Ryan would, you know, work his way all the way to the number one spot and then decide, hey, you know what, maybe I should take a step back, let someone else take the number one mandatory shot for the championship and wait until the fight gets bigger. I mean, why, as a boxing fan, would you prefer that? You should want to see all of the big fights and you should be pushing for all of the fans to get to see the big fights. On top of that, you're talking to one of the biggest boxing promoters in the sport of boxing. You think this man, Eddie Hearn, doesn't know when a fight is big enough to put on? Of course he does. You also have to realize that this is usually the time when fighters, they take on a really, really tough challenge because if you win that fight, that alone makes you a bigger star. Like when Floyd Mayweather was 23 and he was fighting a Diego Corrales. That knockout win took Floyd Mayweather's career to a whole nother level. And it also put him on the pound for pound list at 23 years old. Not to mention when he was even younger than that, he beat the lineal champion, Gennaro Hernandez, when he only has 17 fights. So for some of you old media members that have these favorite fighters that you like and you're trying to protect them, you're saying things to them like, hey man, you can fight whoever you want. All you guys are doing is helping to destroy the sport of boxing. Because if you're gonna keep telling all of these fighters you can cherry pick and fight whoever you want, then that means we're gonna keep getting fights that no one really wants to watch. You know how long it's been since we've seen a fight where you damn near get goosebumps before the first bell rings for the first round? We don't get too many of those fights too often anymore. So once again, man, when you know that we have no big fights at all, and you're still telling fighters, hey man, you can fight whoever you want. You know, we don't really need to see any mega fights this year. Go ahead and fight whoever you want because you call the shots. All you're doing is simply cheating the sport. Everyone should be doing their job when it comes to putting pressure on these fighters to give the fans the fights that they want to see. Because every other sport is guaranteed to watch the best play against the best, except for boxing. So once again, man, I'm really proud of Eddie Hearn. I really appreciate him for trying to push for the fights that boxing fans deserve and want to see. And hopefully, old media can get on the same page one of these days. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man, Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Deaky Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODK.com, like them on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram.